Throughout history, there have been thousands of different types of cars manufactured. Big cars, small cars, fast cars, powerful cars. But what about ugly cars? Well, there's no shortage of those. Automakers are always trying to come up with the next best thing. But unfortunately for them, sometimes they fall flat. So prepare your eyes. Here are the top 15 downright ugliest cars in the world. Number 15. 1938 Stout Scarab Unless you're drinking one, nobody wants to be called stout. And, well, nobody likes scarabs either. So, you're already off to a bad start when you name your car that. In 1938, it is widely to believe the world's first minivan, which is cool if you're a soccer mom or dad, but minivans already don't look very cool. But then again, the 1938 stout scarab set the bar pretty damn low. Just look at this thing. It had an aluminum body and a weird shape courtesy of its rear-mounted Ford V8 engine, and a wide body that didn't have any running boards. Technically, the Stout Scarab was a cutting-edge automobile, but then why the ugly shape? This thing looks like a giant potato bug coming down the street. It's not even good enough to be a clown car. Well, needless to say, the Stout Scarab didn't make it past the year 1938, seeing that only nine were ever made. The odds of you seeing one at a car show are slim to none. Typically, you'd be curious as to the whereabouts of such a rare car, but hopefully, all nine of these junk mobiles are hidden away in someone's garage far, far away from our eyes. Number 14, 1946 Crossley CC. At first glance, you might think this car looks kind of cute with its giant round headlights and mustache like grille and front fender. But when you get a closer look, it looks more like a sad dog in the pound that knows no one is going to take it home. Crossley's miniature cars proved to be popular during the gas shortages and rationing during World War II. And when the war finally came to a close, the automaker gave us the CC. It was one of the first production cars to use a slab-sided design with no running boards. But when you look at this thing, you'll be left scratching your head thinking how this ever became a popular trend. The 1946 Crossley CC looks like it's the squashed-in version of something bigger. And then there are the wheels. They're way too small. They'd probably look better on a Hot Wheels car. And when you go under the hood of this thing, there's a stamped steel overhead camshaft engine, which was a lot more trouble than it was worth. It may be easy to say that the 1946 Crossley CC is better than nothing, but in reality, it's not. Number 13, 1951 Allard P2 Safari. There's no denying that sports cars are awesome. They look good, sound good, and feel good coming down the two-lane blacktop. And old-school woody wagons can be kitschy if you think about it. But no one in their right mind would ever combine the two, right? Well, wrong. Sorry, because that's exactly what happened with the 1951 Allard P2 Safari. It was the car that nobody asked for. A nasty chimera of an automobile with the front of a sports car grafted onto the back of a woody wagon. Why oh why would anyone subject us to this? But for whatever reason, the British automaker Allard thought that it was a good idea for whatever reason. But the resulting car is just sad. The 1951 Allard P2 Safari was powered with a Ford engine, and only about 13 were ever made. That number is just about as unlucky as the car, because clearly no one wanted one. It's said that there were only five in existence, but the odds of this thing ever making a comeback are a big fat zero, and rightfully so. Number 12, 1958 Subaru 360. Another car made to look like a cute little puppy dog to trick consumers into buying it is the unfortunate 1958 Subaru 360. Built in Japan to meet very strict and specific car standards of the time, the dimensions here as well as the engine size were pretty limited due to these constraints. But oftentimes these types of constraints or limitations bring out our creativity in fun ways. But this was not the case in the late 1950s Japan. Despite the buggy eyes in the front, the car as a whole is, as you can see, hideous. But then again, a lot of these types of cars from the 50s and 60s were hideous. But this 1958 Subaru 360 somehow stands above the rest. And that's a crowning achievement that nobody wants. These little uglies were roaring around Japan during the swinging 60s, but didn't make their way to the United States until 1968. The catch? They weren't changed at all. And the commercials running for the 360 were even calling them cheap and ugly. Seriously, look it up. But at that point, no one needed a narrator to tell them this thing fell out of the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. The damage was done the minute it left the assembly line. Number 11, 
1961 Citroen Ami 6. This could have been a good-looking car if they had just finished it. Everybody knows that the French are known for their designs, and they usually do set the fashion trends, but they did pretty much the opposite when they manufactured the 1961 Citroen Ami 6. Ami is the French word for friend, but too bad no one wanted to be Amis with this ugly lug. The front end of the car was nice and wavy, and the fact that the headlights weren't round is cool too. But the back, good grief, it looks like they just got lazy and said, this'll do. But alas, it did not. The 1961 Citroen Ami 6 came with a reversed raked rear window, but combined with an angular B pillar. The whole thing looked windblown and was just a bad overall look. And the design was so bad that not even the ultra cool 1960s French could get down with it. This ugly car was outsold by a whopping 2 to 1 by the Citroen 2CV, which was an older model for which the Ami 6 was based. When your old automobiles are selling better than your new ones, you've made a huge mistake. Au revoir, mon Citroen ami. Number 10. 1970s Marcos Mantis There's looking sleek, and then there's looking like you survived a giant stepping on you. The 1970s Marcos Mantis is one such car. Marcos were known for making cars that weren't necessarily the bell of the ball, but this one really takes the cake. The 1970s Marcos Mantis comes complete with lumpy and uneven lines running across the sides, bad proportions, and just overall dummy details. What the hell were the designers thinking? Well, they probably thought they were making something cutting edge. But sorry guys, because cutting edge this is not. In fact, we wish we could cut the edges off the Mantis, anything to help make this thing a little easier on the eyes. And by some divine intervention, Marcos were able to sell a whopping 32 units in two years. For this car, that's a big victory. But what those 32 Mantis owners were thinking is anyone's guess. Number 9. 1985 Kamsudia GTP Supercars are fast, agile, and look awesome. The 1985 Kamsudia GTP managed to just get two of those things right. And since the car made it to this list, you can probably guess which it's missing. Sometimes two out of three ain't bad, but if you want people to buy it, then it needs to have a great look. Sure, the console year GTP was pretty fast with a 190 horsepower turbocharged engine, and the car's lightweight composite Kevlar and carbon fiber frame only weighed 2,200 pounds. But in 1985, the console year GTP was competing with the likes of Ferrari, Lamborghini, and the Cobra. And no little kid had any console year posters hanging on their walls, did they? Probably not. And even though it came with both a hardtop and a convertible option, it still looks like an over-the-top Miami Vice fever dream that we would love to wake up from. Perhaps the headlight pods were supposed to give off the effect of someone batting their eyelashes at you. But this is one car that we don't even want to make eye contact with. Number 8. 1985 Alfa Romeo SZ Yikes, the next entry on our list is, despite its looks, not a little Lego car. This tiny little box car defies Italian design by being flat out ugly. It's got flat planes, off proportions, and a lame and off putting change in the belt line angle in the front and rear of the B pillar. The 1985 Alfa Romeo SC just isn't doing the trick. Even the wheels look like they were plucked from a children's toy. So, who would want to drive a thing like this? It's like the Italian designers had an amazing design for a prototype, and that car accidentally fell into a trash compactor, and they went for it anyway. The 1980s was a weird time for just about everyone, and we all have had a look that we regret now. But there's just no excuse for this thing, seeing as how there's plenty of much better looking cars that found their way off the assembly line and into our garages. The SC in the name stands for Prince Zagato, and anyone who comes across this car at an auction should just sprint in the opposite direction. Number 7. 1990 Chevrolet Lumina APV Every house should have a dust buster to clean up those little nooks and crannies. Overall, it's got a good design, but that doesn't mean anyone should model a car after it. The 1990 Chevrolet Lumina APV, the name is a mouthful, so there's no point in getting used to saying it unless you're making a list of the world's ugliest cars. For whatever reason, Chevrolet wanted to make a more futuristic looking minivan. And if that sounds like an oxymoron, that's because it is. And while that may be an admirable goal, when you end up turning out a giant box on four wheels, you blew it. And the thought of this thing roaming through the suburbs is enough to make anyone cringe. But then there's the low to ground nose that makes the Lumina APV looks like it's sniffing on the ground on its way home from soccer practice. 
That also meant that the dashboard was on the worst slope possible, and anything you put there is sliding down into the front and between the cracks never to be seen again, unless you're willing to take out the windshield. Seriously, rest in peace 1990 Chevrolet Lumina APV. Unlike many other things from the 90s, you will not be missed. Number 6. 1998 Fiat Multipla Fiats will never go down in history as being the most beautiful car in the world. They won't even make the top 20 list. But there is one model that really sets them back in the looks department, and that's the 1998 Fiat Multipla. At the end of the 1990s, everybody was getting ready to either be thrust into the new millennium or be destroyed by Y2K. We had nothing to lose, but that doesn't mean you should go ahead and make this four-wheel monstrosity. If you really wanted to sit down and talk about everything wrong with this car, you better bring a sleeping bag because you'll be up all night. It's not worth the trouble. Instead, just poke fun at it because that's all this car is good for. First off, it looks like Jabba the Hutt sat on the hood, and there's a fishbowl glass for windows that serve absolutely no purpose. Frankly, the top and bottom halves of the Fiat Multipla don't even match. It looks like two separate cars were cut in half and then sewn together like some sort of Fiat centipede. But this thing is just as ugly on the inside, too. The gauges and controls are all crammed onto the center stack, making it look like a child's toy. Aren't the French supposed to be fashionable? Number 5. 2011 Aston Martin Signet If Aston Martin is good enough for Mr. Bond, Mr. James Bond, then they're good enough for us. That is, unless it's the 2011 Aston Martin Signet. This is another car that we hope will die another day and won't live twice. If you've asked yourself, what is going on here, after seeing this thing, then congratulations because you are sane. What were the designers thinking? To say they were trying too hard doesn't quite explain it. But then again, neither does saying they weren't trying at all. Something is going on here, but it's all bad. The Aston Martin Signet looks like the folks at Fiat tried their hand at a luxury automobile. The purpose here, though, is to meet emission standards, but there has to be a way to save the planet and look good at the same time. Just look at Leonardo DiCaprio. But the thing is, this car looks nothing like an Aston Martin. But as a tongue-in-cheek gesture, they did make a one-off V8-powered version. But you couldn't pay us enough money to be caught in one of those things. Aston Martin, you are Aston Mart out. Aston Martin, why did you do this to us? Why did you curse us with this thing? Number 4. 2012 Mini Cooper Coupe If you're tall, or even average height, then steer clear of the 2012 Mini Cooper Coupe. Even the name is ugly. Mini Cooper Coupe? What were they thinking? And the fact that this is the product of BMW only breaks our hearts even more. The Mini Cooper certainly had its time in the sun, but BMW decided to create an entire range of the car, with this little guy being the debut in the series. But it looks like they built this thing from the bottom up. And by the time they reached the top half, they either ran out of materials or flat out gave up and called it a day. Try not to laugh when hearing this, but the design of the car is made to look like a kid wearing a backward baseball hat. But instead, they made something equally as annoying as a 10-year-old boy. Of all the fashion icons, BMW chose kids. I'm sure the Mini Cooper drove just fine. We'll give it that. But the roof is so low that the rear view is non-existent, and the back seat was so small you could barely even fit your purse back there. Somehow, they took an impractical car and made it even more useless. And lucky for the rest of us, they put this thing out of its misery in 2015. Jeez, I own this car. Number 3. 1992 Buick Skylark This car looks sad. No, really. If you look at it from head on, it looks like it knows how ugly it is, and all it can do is frown and say, help me. The 1992 Buick Skylark is anything but cute. This was the final iteration of the Skylark, and instead of going out with a bang, the line went out with one weird whimper. The front bumper and grill serve absolutely no purpose other than offending your eyes, and the parking lights in the back look like they were forced in with a rough hammer. What the hell is even going on here? Then there's the oddly thick body complete with a hideous two-tone paint job, and the cherry on top, or in this case the bottom, is the fender-looking skirt. We may love to reminisce about the 90s, but they were still a strange time nonetheless, and the 1992 Buick Skylark really encapsulates that. And if you're wondering if you've ever seen one of these things roaming the streets in the last 30 years, then the answer is a very hard no. Buick is by no means a bad name in cars, but good god, this Skylark is so ugly that it could hardly make it off the car lot. Number 2. 1995 Oldsmobile Aurora Back in the day, Oldsmobile was a well-known brand, but over the years they started to lose out to the competition more and more. 
Eventually, the folks at Oldsmobile knew that they would become an automaker of the past if they didn't do something drastic to turn things around. And fast. So they came up with the awful idea for the 1995 Aurora. Yeah, the technology was more innovative than anything they'd give consumers before, but wow was this thing lacking in the looks department. Whether or not their designers tried is still up for debate, and you can form your own opinion when you look at this strange car. The body of the 95 Oldsmobile Aurora looked like it had been left out for thousands of years and let time and erosion just do their thing before hitting the market. But the real standout here is those headlights that look like they can barely see anything as they squint in the night. It's amazing those lights didn't give the car wrinkles. The car did get some great reviews for its performance and handling, but nobody bought it. The 1995 Aurora was the beginning of the end for Oldsmobile, and they closed their doors in 2004. Number 1. Nissan Pivo 2 Half car, half robot, all ugly. The Nissan Pivo 2 is, well, it's something. The concept was shown off in 2005 with the Pivo 1, but the Pivo 2 debuted in 2007 and was somehow an upgrade from its predecessor. This small pod with four protruding wheels is meant to look like a car of the future, but instead it looks like a failed Disney World ride. It's rough, and frankly unfair to anyone who has to look at it. The Nissan Pivo 2 is fully electric, and the entire car is capable of swiveling the entire cabin around, so if you're bad at parking, this may be the perfect alternative for you. But everyone in the parking lot is going to be staring at you. The wheels can also turn 90 degrees to drive the car sideways, because who doesn't have that, this car is nice, but I wish it moved like a crab? It doesn't even look like a car. Now, the Pivo 2 has a built-in AI that can communicate with the driver in either English or Japanese, and will do just about everything for you. If only it could be programmed to give itself a facelift. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.